Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. We are happy that you've chosen to spend time with us this morning. And whether you're a member or a regular attendee or joining us for the very first time, we want you to know that we're here to support you in finding that personal relationship with God, the God of your understanding. And what is equally important, discovering what you already know. My name is Jerry Bateman. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to share the time with you. And I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit, and it means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. So let's begin our time together today, as we always do, by affirming our vision and mission statements. These words can be seen on your screen. Please join with me in reading them aloud. First, our vision, which is empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. And now our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach and service, and we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. So now we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation. I invite you to relax. Put aside all your challenges and burdens. Close your eyes and breathe deeply as Bob Teasdale helps us to go within through a familiar song by Penelope Williams called Be Still and Know. still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still and know that you are God. Be still and know that you are. Be still and know. still and know that you are God. Be still and know that you are. Be still and know that you are God. Be still and know. Be still and know that we are God. Be still and know Be still and know that we are God. Be still and know. Be still and know that we are God. Be still and know that we are. Be still and know that we are God. Be still and know. Be still and know that all is God. Be still and know that all is. Be 
still I know that all is gone Be still I know Be still I know that all is gone Be still I know that all is Be still I know that all is gone Be still and know. In the stillness, I know that we are all made perfect when we enter into the communion of love with one another and with the invisible essence of life. Love is the fulfillment of the law. That is, we do not make the highest use of the law unless that use is motivated by love, by a sincere desire to express unity harmony and peace. As the soaring bird opens her wings to the sky's embrace, so we must open our hearts and minds to the influx of spirit and receive its love that we may in turn express it to all whom we meet. We must embrace the essence of love that we may transmit it, giving loveliness to all events. Today, I bestow the limitless love flowing through me upon everything. My soul meets the soul of the universe in everyone. Nothing is ordinary. It is all beautiful and meaningful. This love is a healing power that touches everything into wholeness. Healing the wounds of experience with its divine balm. I know that this love essence, the very substance of life, the creative principle back of everything flows through my whole being, spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical. It flows in transcendent loveliness into my world of thought and form, ever renewing, vitalizing, bringing joy and harmony, and blessing everything and everyone it touches. In gratitude, I believe this as truth and claim it for myself in each one, releasing it into the law. And so it is. This morning, it is my honor to introduce Reverend Karen Wilson, our founding minister and spiritual director, who will be speaking with us and sharing the fourth in a series of messages. She is entitled, What's It All About? If you'd like to listen to the first three messages in the series, you'll find them by clicking on the Facebook or YouTube button on our website. In anticipation of Reverend Karen's words, let's listen to Bob Teasdale and Jay Poindexter as they set the stage with, with Move in the Direction of Your Dreams by Michael Gott. to yourself to look inside of you and take the time to realize what you are here to do don't you think the time has finally come to stand and face the fire to walk into the blazing sun and claim your heart's desire you were placed upon this earth with a mission to complete and now the time has come so stand up strong and claim your destiny you must move in the direction of your dreams and act as if they've already come No hope or so it seems Move in the direction of your dreams Do you think that you're not good enough 
to be a shining star Do you think because the road looks tough That you won't get that far? Do you believe that only some are great And others left to chance? Or maybe that it's just too late A futile circumstance You were placed upon this earth With a mission to complete And now the time has come So stand up strong and claim your destiny You must move in the direction of your Act as if they've already come true Even when there is no hope for so it seems Move in the direction of your dreams And when the world feels like it's crashing Crashing all around you Clouds of doubt are darkening your day Well then just be still and know That there's something deep inside you That will always, always know the way Thank you, Jay and Bob. Move in the direction of your dreams. Who doesn't want to do that? Today we're going to explore a powerful way to not only move in the direction of your dreams, but to manifest your dreams. Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching, said this, The ability to attain your goals lies in your own mind and the way to use it. More about that in a moment, but first, here's a quick recap of the first three parts of this uh, four-part June series I've been doing, titled, What's It All About? And, you know, at the end of May, we witnessed reports of epic violence occurring in our country. Those, in addition to experiencing all the pain, the hatred, the conflict, and suffering we see in our world, well, you know, it kind of piled up, and it just seemed... And it seems that among people everywhere is a profound sense of sheer exhaustion, mentally, physically, and yes, even spiritually. And I felt that too. Asking myself, what's it all about? Where to turn? What to do? And something in me has just wanted to go home, metaphorically. But where was home? Well, Gradually, I realized that I knew deep inside that there was only one place to turn, to rest, to seek guidance. It was to God, to my higher power, to that infinite source of indescribable peace and wisdom, strength and love. To that, that dimension beyond arguments and opinions and righteous pontificating and politics, <laughs> where we know we are in relationship with something greater an energy that supports our aliveness through all the ups and downs of life's experiences, that enables us to have a higher view, to see promise and possibility despite and beyond agonizing and seemingly hopeless appearances, a feeling of home, or in a word, God. 
Now, you may have your own terminology and verbiage for God and all of this, and that's wonderful because you hear us say each Sunday, here you can find a personal relationship with the God of your understanding. And, of course, that means by whatever name you are comfortable calling it. So, as my thoughts turned to planning these messages for the month of June, it was so clear finding my way back home meant getting back to basics. The foundation, the grounding provided by the science of mind principles that we teach here. And so I've titled these June messages, What's It All About? And before I go on, let's check in with each other. You know I'm so happy knowing you're out there. And we do have each other, and that means so much. I always wonder, how are you doing? Let's continue to stay in touch as 2022 unfolds. And just know that no matter what's going on, I continue to affirm for you a year of vibrant wonder. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you too are a wonder. You are an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, and our connection. Thank you. So what's it all about? Well, Dr. Ernest Holmes, as I said, the architect of this teaching, which is called Religious Science, summed it up in the first four chapters of the textbook. The thing itself, the way it works, what it does, and how to use it. Now, you might not be able to tell by those titles uh, that these four chapters are about God and about our relationship to God, to the universe, to life, by that uh, to that which is beyond definition. So why not include God in the titles? Well, beginning with the thing itself, Holmes was aware of the dogma, the superstition, and often limited ideas around God. So he used different terminology in order to open people's awareness of this infinite loving energy available to all. So part one was the first chapter, the thing itself, or God. Part two was the way it works, the way God works. Last week, part three, what it does, what God does. And simply what God does is it responds to us. Holmes said, there's a power for good in the universe greater than you are, and you can use it. So how to use it? How can we use this divine, immense power? Very simply, by means of our thoughts, our deepest, our deepest thoughts, beliefs, feelings, our focused attention and intentions and interest. And more specifically, by means of our prayers. So let me ask you, when facing a problem, is prayer your first response or is prayer your last resort? Might as well pray. You know, I've tried everything else. And the question is, does prayer change things? Well, not exactly. Prayer changes the one who's praying, and then things change. Although, not always in the way you might have thought they would. But always for the greater unfolding of your highest and best. And you can hear the thunder in the background, by the way. <laughs> I wonder if that's good timing as where I am in this message. Anyway, it's like the, the, cha the answers to prayer are always for the greater unfolding of your highest and best. Prayer doesn't change God's mind. It changes your mind. Eric Butterworth said, Prayer is not trying to reach God or tell God all about your troubles. It is to know God as the infinite resource within you. The object of prayer is to expand your awareness of infinite mind, which is present right where you are. And Ernest Holmes said, Prayer is a movement of thought within the mind of the one praying. Now another way Holmes put it is this, The ultimate essence of prayer is your thoughts. And he continued, Prayer is a mental attitude. It is a simple, direct, positive, believing, mental attitude. Simply put, prayer is a very focused thought. 
Now, you may have noticed that here in this Center for Spiritual Living, our prayers sound a bit different from the conventional idea of prayer. And why, why is that? Because, as you've also heard on these past three Sundays, our idea of God is different from the conventional idea of God. And, you know, whatever you think about God is inevitably intertwined with what you think about prayer. Now, we call it spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer because it is a process of affirming our spiritual truth. Ernest Holmes didn't call it prayer because he, again, thought people would probably immediately revert to the conventional pleading and bargaining with a God that might or might not answer idea of prayer. So he called it spiritual mind treatment because he wanted people to treat their minds to a spiritual idea, a new idea. And he wanted people to recognize it as a powerful, creative tool they could use. That is, treating your mind to a new and better and higher idea about whatever, whatever your issue might be. Affirming your possibilities, your spiritual truth, despite the conditions and appearances. That is, despite the facts. Now, those facts can be very impressive. They can be overwhelming, so that often they can obscure your awareness of the truth. For example, a fact could be a symptom, a prognosis, a statistical prediction, a behavior, a precedent, a place, or a thing. Facts include your job, your home, car, clothes, bank account, relationships, and more. Facts are simply effects. And here's the good news. They can always be transformed or transcended by the unchanging truth, the greater, higher, divine idea, thought. The most focused tool for shifting our preoccupation with the facts, the fa uh, shifting our, our, our preoccupation with those facts and shifting it to the powerful truth is spiritual mind treatment. Spiritual mind treatment isn't a recitation about what you do not want. It isn't done to change God's mind. It is to change your mind. It's not talking to God. It's talking about God, about your spiritual essence, your divine truth. Now, if you take any of our classes, you will learn so much more about this, about how to use it, how to use this power of the universe, God, spirit, and how to use it by means of spiritual mind treatment. Now, I'll give you more information about that in a minute. But here's, here's, here's something first. There is a simple framework of five steps to spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. It's sort of a track which helps to keep our thoughts clear and focused. In five short sentences, they declare the powerful spiritual truth that lifts you above the confusion and the limitation of your problem to a level of limitless and lasting creative change. Now, these steps are not mandatory. They just serve as guidelines. And you know, by the time most of us decide to pray about a problem, we're usually so, so deeply enmeshed in our problem or our issue that we don't know how to move past it and how to use affirmative words and, and how to be receptive to the solution that's there, the solution that we seek. Raymond Charles Barker said it simply, there's nothing to ask, there is only something to know. So when doing your spiritual mind treatment or your affirmative prayer, use words that are affirmative about, about what you do desire, not about what you don't want. And say it in the present tense, why? Because the truth you are claiming, beyond the facts, is infinite, which means it exists right here and right now. Keep it simple and to the point. Spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer, it's not for show, it's for grow. Your powerful affirmations are expanding your consciousness, expanding your perspective. So here's an example of those steps. God or spirit or the infinite is all. I am one with God in spirit, mind, and body. 
Greater than any facts of my situation is the truth that the good I seek already exists for me right here and right now. Knowing this truth, I accept my good with thanksgiving. I release this treatment knowing it is done as I believe. I let go and I let God, and so it is. And by the way, Ernest Holmes tells us that whatever your personal desires may be, as long as they do not hurt you or anyone else, you have a right to attain them. So now what's next? Are my prayers really answered? Yes, yes they are. Eric Butterworth said, in God there is an eternal yes. Your part is to get into a yes consciousness and stay there. When doubts creep in, do a 180 and remind yourself that the truth is at work on your behalf. Also, a vital aspect of that yes consciousness is paying attention. Why? Because the answer may come in an unexpected way may come through unexpected sources and also may come incrementally. Thomas Troward wrote, we must resolutely put aside all questioning as to the specific means which will be employed. We are dealing with the infinite and this intelligence can draw together the means requisite for its purpose even from the ends of the world. Wow. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with. God is the one source of all, all answers to prayer. But this one source uses many avenues as the means to answer your prayers. As Ernest Holmes says, never depend on specific people or insist that things must come from a specific source. It makes no difference where things come from. Nothing can hinder the divine flow. And while you're paying attention, Take note that your answer may be right in front of you. Eric Butterworth again says it this way, The need is not to set things right, but to see them rightly. Now, here's something else we can overlook. Something or someone brand new shows up in your life, and it's seemingly unrelated to the thing you're treating for. But if you take note and don't dismiss it, you just might find it leads you to that exact thing you desire. Ernest Holmes said it so many ways. I love this. One of my favorites. Principle is not bound by precedent. Principle is not bound by precedent. That means God is never limited by past information or experiences, patterns or circumstances. So make sure that you aren't limited by precedent. Now, your answer may be like a seedling that is barely visible as it begins to sprout. So, while you're paying attention, watch for and celebrate every small indicator that appears. Because that's the process of growth. And be patient. The universe, God, is arranging everything in readiness for your answer. And if it's rushed, you might not be prepared and, well... It reminds me of the movie Big with Tom Hanks some, some time ago. And I invite you to check it out. But if, if you recall, it was a, as a small young boy, he wanted to be big. And he's got his wish. He went to a carnival and there was a machine that would grant people wishes, a carnival thing. And so he put in his wish, I want to be big. Well, overnight, his wish came true. It happened. He woke up to find he was big. But everything else in his surroundings was as it had been. And well, the result was a series of mishaps and disasters until he didn't want to be big anymore. Divine timing is perfect, so be patient. And one more thing. Sometimes things may get worse before they get better. They may even get chaotic. And sometimes that is the process of change and growth, necessary to prepare you and to bring about the result you're seeking. So be patient. So there you have it. 
how to use it, this loving, responsive, infinite presence. And I've only scratched the surface of all that is possible. So that's why I invite you to our classes. They provide you with the opportunity to ask questions, to try and experiment, and to go deeper in this adventure of your relationship with the infinite. And if you'll stay tuned for the announcements in just a few minutes, you'll hear about the new class being offered very soon by Kathleen Frankert, one of our spiritual practitioners. Uh, it begins July 12th, Spiritual Principles and Practices, Simple and Powerful Practices for Creating Results Like Never Before. Check it out. You'll be glad you did, and you'll be able to dig so much more deeply into what we've been talking about this month and how it applies in your own life. And one more thing, make an appointment with one of our spiritual practitioners. If you have something going on, meet with them to support you in spiritual mind treatment, applying to what's, what your issue is. These practitioners are skilled in guiding you to know the magnificent truth behind whatever the facts you may be facing. I call my practitioner at least once a month. And believe me, it makes all the difference. So that's it, how to use it. And as you use this power in your life, you're going to want to sing right along with Jay and Bob. God makes me want to sing. How to use it. Have a great week. Try it out. God makes me want to sing. I can't help it, God makes me want to sing It makes me feel so good, I can do most anything I am loving every living thing I can see the face of God in Papa Just no one less or more We've all got the same treasure in store I'm loving every living thing I can't help it God makes me want to sing I can't help it God makes me want to sing Mm, it makes me feel so good 
Thank you, Reverend Karen, for gifting us with yet another inspiring message that completes the circle of understanding of what it's really all about. And Bob and Jay, you make us all want to sing and maybe dance too with your rendition of Namad Spirited, God Makes Me Want to Sing. Now we move into our time of offering, and we want you to know that we're, we're so grateful for your generous financial support of our center because it allows us to live our mission and values, and most importantly, to support you in so many ways. How can you share your offering? It's easy. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com. Find the, the donate button, which will bring up several options for making a contribution. You can contribute by PayPal or credit card, you can mail a check to our address. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it. And know this with me, my gift goes forth to heal, to bless and to prosper. And the divine flow returns it to me multiplied abundantly. Please join with me in our offering affirmation, which is visible on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. We are most grateful, thank you. If you would like affirmative prayer support, please draw your attention to the green prayer request button on the website. Use this feature to send us your prayer request. Our five licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Franken, Jim Grove, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, and Sean Scanlon are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with you and for you in whatever challenge you might be experiencing. Along with prayer support, they also offer one hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. For more information, check under the staff link on the left side of the screen and select the practitioners. Also on our website, you can sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. Check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. We have a couple of announcements today. First, uh, our spiritual living circle facilitated by Jim Grove usually meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening. But this coming Wednesday, June 29th, it will not meet. Keep it in mind though, as we will resume on Wednesday, July 6th. Look for an announcement next Sunday regarding the details of this weekly event, which is really a wonderful midweek way to connect with other like-minded individuals for some stimulating conversation around an article from the most current science of mind magazine. We'll see you on July 6 for that. So are you up for living your best life? And would you like to discover simple, powerful practices for creating results like never before? I'm very excited to tell you that beginning on Tuesday, July 12th for five weeks, concluding on Tuesday, August 9th, our own Kathleen Frankett will be offering an online class entitled Spiritual Principles and Practices, Five Ways to New Results. Trust me, as someone who has taken most of Kathleen's classes, you don't wanna miss this one. Check it out on our website, www.cslsarasota.com and enroll. Hope to see you there. Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into our day and the week ahead with joy, knowing that peace and love are ever in us, as us, and working through us to create that better world, a world that works for everyone. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. 
Thank you for being with us this morning and have a great week, everyone. And leave.